And a very good morning to you. Welcome to the Trigger Charge pre-market rundown for September 11th, 2020. And I hope everybody's doing well today. Hopefully you've had a good week of trading. This has been one of those markets where you can make a lot of mistakes or you can make a lot of profits. So we're going to talk about getting you and making sure you're on that right track to profitability because that's what the Trigger Charge Commander Series, the Aileron, the entire suite of indicators and all the indicators that we have from the KRI, the Key Reversal Indicator, all the way through uh, the aileron and the aileron scanner all those things are meant to find you opportunities to trade so hopefully you've been taking advantage of it you know one of the things that has happened i want to kind of talk to you about something for a minute here before we get started and of course i want you to read the important disclosure disclaimer that this is for educational purposes only it is not an offer to buy or sell any security it is uh, in investing and investing carries a lot of risk now i've been doing this for a long time i've been doing uh, investing on fundamentals, on technicals, utilizing quantitative uh, screening and criteria. And I want to tell you something, that when markets get very volatile, like we saw over the last week, there's a lot of mistakes that can be made. This is exactly why we created the Commander Series, in particular, looking at where the levels of interest, where the bias is, either on the short side or the long side, so we can really get a very good discipline. Because what has happened over the time, and I know you've had this probably happen too, and you're going to shake your head, I think, yes, along with this, is that you get attached to a name. You get attached to a stock. You get attached to an idea. And you get underwater. And then you're like, you know what? It will come back. It's going to come back. I'm not worried about it. I really like this ABC stock. It's done a great job. Now I'm underwater. I know it comes back. You know why? Because it always comes back. And we have a lot of those people out there right now that are talking about stocks always go up, but they've only been investing since late March. So they really don't understand the full dynamic of what could happen to a stock over a long period of time. And when I say long period of time, that's all dependent on your time frame. That could be either if you're, if you're working on a, a swing trade or a scalp trade or an intraday trade, it could be when it's very short term. And you have, you know, all of a sudden it goes underwater and you're holding it, holding it till the end of the day and you commit not to holding it after the close and then you get out with a loss so what you are dealing with here right now is something that is important to understand and that is it has no bearing on whether you like or don't like a stock or a future or a forex or whatever else it is they have no feelings for you get that straight the stock the instrument the thing that you're dealing with whatever you're trading has no feeling for you at all and it's going to do what it does it also doesn't matter the name or the symbol or what it does or who's in charge or if you're following something due to an idea you like. The fact is, the price action is going to do what it does. You have to really try to segregate as best as possible the whole idea of all the other things that made you go into that name and then trade the price action with volume as an accentuator to help you understand where there is trading by the institutions, where the line in the sand is. So hopefully you understand what I'm trying to get out here, and hopefully you are doing that already, and that would have allowed you to make a lot of money by switching up either from long positions into short positions over the last couple of weeks where we did see the mark come down. On the right-hand side of the screen now, you're looking at what you see is a uh, chart, very simple, of the NASDAQ. Listen, the NASDAQ QQQs went up seems like forever right but it did have a nice run but there were times that said you know what let's move in let's move out green is when we're long orange is where it says you know what we're going to take our profits that's a profit um, uh, target right there and then we're going to move out because it did move below a new level of altimeters that were drawn these three lines and all of these by the way are available on the trade station trading app store there's a 10-day free trial for all of our indicators and some indicators are actually free but you did notice we saw this big upswing, and then it got a little bit hairy up this. And this is where we kind of put that mark a couple of weeks back, where we thought it would be 273 and change, currently trading at 272.34. So settling in right on that support level, which also is something else. That is the 50-day moving average. We're seeing that lines are being hit. Uh, we're seeing that we're, we're, we're having a lot of tests of some, we'll call it old school, the, the old school indicators like moving averages. It's important to understand that they really mean nothing, but they are used by a lot of institutions. I talk about this all the time. The 50-day moving average, the 150-day moving average, the 200-day uh, moving average. These are all components of what institutionals use. They have a couple of things where they say, you know, 
Here's what we're going to do. We own a stock. We like the stock for whatever reason. If it pulls back to the 50-day moving average, you know what we're going to do? We're going to buy some more. We're going to defend it. That's what they're doing. They're defending that line. And that's what we saw on the Qs. And that was a culmination, of course, of the Apple move, what you saw, the outside Tesla move, uh, the move on all the different uh, major names that we've been talking about for some time. We also saw the S&P 500 approach its 50-day moving average and not get quite there. It didn't bounce off as dramatically as we saw the Qs. First time, by the way, for both of those getting close since April. So there is some potential downside as we see it in the Qs, and we'll talk about some of these other names. But in the Qs, we do see that there is this line at about 273, currently trading right about there, right? We have 273.08. It's currently trading in pre-market at 273.78. I'll also make sure that you, I want to make sure you understand that you can put any of your, um, your stock symbols inside the chat panel and we will get to those please do me a favor get them in there a little bit early if you've asked some of the names in the last couple of weeks change up the names because you know what i'm going to call you out on it if you're asking the same names week after week day after day and you know that you're just holding it to hold it and you just want to find out well that's no fun we want to find some new opportunities where we can see some explosive growth or maybe to the upside or downside and take advantage of that so come up with a couple of new names for me to look at there all right, also last week was really fascinating. If you remember, we saw one of these crazy days. It was right here, right? Look at that. That's a, that is a, that's a doji, but it's a, it's, it's a hammer to the upside right there. There's a couple of names here, shooting star maybe to a degree. It didn't really clear the top as well as we'd want to see a shooting star. But what we have here is a pattern that was a bit of a blow-off top there. And what was that all about? Well, we later found out that, uh, I think his name is Matsu, Matsu-san or Matsu-san from SoftBank. Well, he was buying billions, billions of dollars worth of call options on many of the technology stocks that they have in their portfolio. Once again, having cheap money, allowing bubbles to be blown. What happened was they started buying these call options. It artificially started bringing up stocks. People were noticing all these call options. And not only did the queues move up like this, but we saw all the big names move up and it dragged all the markets up higher. Once this was found out and once the realization happened that this whale was in the market, as they call it in the crypto space, we had this whale in there, oversized bets, and it was only really concentrated by one firm. Well, all things were, well, all bets were off, right? And what we saw was this massive realization that holy cow, the only thing that was going on here was really not price discovery due to fundamentals. It was really just this money that was being pushed in and pushed in and pushed in by a couple of major players and the rest of the market wasn't doing anything. We saw that with McClellan oscillated we talked about the kri indicator was clearly signaling an overbought situation we noticed it from the advanced decline line and that's what we talked about over the last couple of weeks these are kind of some of the things that are really important to pay attention to so um we saw this kind of a uh, big long trade suction into the markets we can sold tech trade is fizzling so the question is is this a reality check is this more of uh, just a simple retracement of just some excess or is there a reality check going on that hey you know what we have a really significant unemployment situation and while we are seeing manufacturing get back we're still in a deep hole in terms of gdp we have real problems when it comes to the overall economy and with uh, bankruptcies on the way and really all that we have right now is government stimulus that's really holding us up to level where we should be consistent of fiscal and monetary stimulus from the Fed, as well as a very low interest rate environment. So kind of that's going on. The other thing that's really interesting is the post spinoff trade. We saw, not spinoff, a uh, split trade. We saw that there was that uh, massive move by Tesla, really kind of ridiculous, uh, as well as the move by Apple when they announced that they were going to do a stock split, which had no bearing on anything. So I'm not sure exactly what went on there. Um, so we talked about this, the breath, the McClellan. Uh, once the dam broke, things got a little crazy. Economics, initial claims remain under 1 million. That's what we saw yesterday, about 850,000 or so. That's good. Terrible, terrible, terrible number, but it's better than it was. Uh, China, uh, PPI shows that we do have inflation. We talked about that also, why the Fed is going to inflation averaging. We talked about this on our Monday meetings, which is more of a, just a general Q&A, and we talked about it here. Crude oil, if you notice what's going on with crude oil, uh, dropping significantly down from the $41 level that was holding pretty well, about $41.50, down to 36 and a half, and that was due to the fact that Saudi Arabia dropped their prices. And also we have China that shows a significant demand reduction overall. 
We have 53 days until the election. Biden supposedly has the lead, according to the polls, in major areas. It looks like there's a lock on, on a couple of, um, of states, but anything's possible here. We'll see what goes on. Obviously, the markets are also trading on that situation where they are really focused on that. I think there's it's 9-11 on 9-11. I think there's a quick moment of silence probably going on in the market. So we'll just recognize that and mention that probably on the floor of the exchanges and everywhere else. So recognizing 9-11 uh, many years ago, the, the horrors and the travesty and the lo loss of life, terrible what happened at the hands of extremists. Got to protect about that. Okay. Um, next week, we have a busy week. Import, export prices, retail sales, FOMC rate decision, business inventories, housing starts, leading indicators in the University of Michigan, uh, which is the consumer confidence level. We have a four-hour online coaching course that I want to make sure you're aware of. Anybody that signs up for a subscription, a new subscription to the Commander Series, over on trading, not, not a trial, but a subscription, paying subscription, we'll get a four-hour uh, online coaching session, which you can do at your leisure anytime you want. We're going to be looking at Tesla and RH and W and WW. We'll look at Apple Pen, Rocket, uh, Jets, Purple Innovations, which is a mattress company. Uh, we're going to look at uh, some of the cruise lines today as well, as well as some of your names. So um, let's go to this over here. This is what you see with the Commander Series. Uh, this is basically what you get right out of the box, except for the fact you don't get this. I'll kind of turn this off and show you um, what it looks like. This is exactly what it looks like, the Commander Series. On the top, you get this great grid, which shows you a lot of information about what you need at a glance. And we tell you again, because we're really proud of it, we're the only ones that can do this and have done this on TradeStation, where you have one symbol and you have multiple time frames across one row. So you have the columns that are there, if you look at that very closely. And you have um, all of the different ones, like right here, we have 30, 60, 240, daily and weekly. So you put one symbol in, it just moves it across and tells you a mini chart what we're looking at. So right now, for example, on the left-hand side, we're looking at gold, right? So that's somewhere down here. Here's gold. So gold, we're looking at a 30-minute. Uh, and you'll notice that it's gray here, which means there's nothing going on here, okay? Um, on a daily basis, well, there's nothing going on here either. But if we switch this to weekly, for example, you'll see 22, there it is, 22 greenies, corresponds perfectly to what's going on on the top here. We'd like to stick with the daily just for the educational purposes of it. You could use any time frame you want on the charts. You could also use um, the minimum of 30 minute when it comes to, there you go, 30 minute when it comes to the um, the, the radar screen. So uh, that's there. Let's, let's start with some of these stocks, give it some more room here. All right, so what do we have? I think I pushed the wrong button. There we go. Hey, I'm back. Uh, so we have Tesla first. Let's look at Tesla real quickly. We got a, a good amount of names in here that we're going to look. Oh, we got a good amount of names we're going to look at. Okay. Um, Tesla, well, on a daily basis, again, we just look at the chart. We see the momentum has changed dramatically over the last three, four days. We do know that, that coincides with this big drop. We did see that there was some nice support right here at about the 859 level. Obviously, if you kind of really want to take it down and draw a line, which I always talk about, say, okay, where was that last major support, which, which, which works across pretty well from right to left, right? So we have right about here. And don't you know at 327, Look at that, almost right on that button right there where it came. The low on that day, if you hover over it, was 329. So pretty close if you would have looked at that and said, hey, you know what, I'm willing to take a shot at this thing down at the past support, which was resistance for a point where it took off. That would have been a good play. Right now, up about $9. Um, I think it's a very dangerous stock right now. I think there's a lot of fluff in there, a lot of people thinking it's going to go right back up. And I think that there is uh, some embedded problems in this uh, due to the fact that we have a lot of competition. Now, put that aside for a second. We do see on a daily basis that we are right now coming off of a short, right? Went to the short side about 415, dropped down, got out of it at about 375. Right now, you're in no man's land. And what I mean by that is there's really nothing here. You have a hole. Again, drawing boxes. We've got to kind of look, see where do we have some space. So we have this area right there that we may see some trading from former areas of support and resistance to current areas of support and resistance down to the box. Uh, take the box down a little bit to where we have our current altimeter. Very simple. Simple as drawing. You've done that in kindergarten. That's why we do it here. It makes it very easy to think through this. We have lines and boxes and circles. Oh my. 
So we have Tesla on there. Uh, RH. RH gapped up pretty well yesterday after really nice earnings. I mean, this has been uh, tremendous. This is, this is a, a long alert here. This is not something that I would get involved in. Uh, if we get a, a, a significant gap up to the upside, uh, there is oftentimes a little bit of a takedown back towards somewhere where we had support. Now, whether it comes from about the 400s down back to you know, 340, a lot of people are calling for this to be a $600 stock. Very thinly traded, high short interest. Um, it's kind of a poster child for people that have excess money due to whatever reason right now that want to do some things to the house. Because if you go there and you look at stools, they're like $1,500 per stool. Don't even get me started about the price of the couch. But they have some kind of subscription program there. Forget about all that. The bottom line is this did gap up. It did come down to support here, right about here. Uh, there was really not much to play there. You have a major island on the upside here. Could you come down to 372 on the short, possibly? I think so. 10 points. I don't know if you want to play that. Uh, Wayfair, similar situation here. Um, difference was Wayfair has been coming down for a while. Actually, we took that short uh, right about 320. I did that personally. Uh, covered it down here about probably, I don't know, probably about the 288 or so. Left some on the table. Did come down into support. Um, it really, it did get down to this level of this uh, before the takeoff that we saw in July. Uh, very thinly traded also, but there is a lot of excitement over that. The reason why we saw that big move up yesterday from, what was it, 20, 257 to 297 was on the back of the red, the, the, the RH, uh, Restoration Hardware Numbers. And I think that was important uh, to look at. WW talked about this, and we talked about, you know, this had a great, unbelievable, long-term, if you remember this, we talked about this. I want to tell you where things go awry and what to do about it. We, we talked about this, this long-term consolidation. And in the long-term consolidation, we said, wow, it's been pretty miraculous. It's been holding up. It's been holding up. Every time it does, it bounces up. You can play the inside. We talked about this many times. However, it broke down. You know what? Bye-bye. Weight Watchers went on a diet itself, and it came in. Where does it go from here? Well, right now we're in a short position that is being called here. We have the aileron. If you notice, this is really important, I think, recognize, is that the aileron, if I can pull up my annotation tools, the aileron on the bottom here, this whole range on the bottom, is coordinating with the fact that you're below the line. The momentum is to the downside. We're seeing a little bit of a move higher here, but it doesn't look like it looked all the way back here, right? And that was something where we said, you know what, we'll take a shot there right now. Off of the off of the list. All right, what else we got here? Uh, Apple. Well, Apple again. Let's kind of focus in again. All these charts. It doesn't matter if it's daily, if it's thirty minute, if it's five minute, if it's ten minute, if it's weekly. These are the lessons that you use for each of these charts are all the same. I want to make sure I'm very clear about that. All the same. No matter what time frame you use, the lessons I'm teaching you are all the same. So we look at this and we look at Apple. We look on the top here and we see well. Apple's been long for six weeks. It's been short for five days. We see that right here. Got that short call at 123. Currently trading at, what, 114. Got down to previous levels of support before that takeoff. So basically, you know what you're seeing in the market right now, right? If you haven't noticed it already, you're seeing, uh, let's go with a square because I think that's important. You're seeing that this entire range that was blown out, that started in the beginning of August, and that ramped up and got really pretty hysterical, towards the end of August is pretty wa pretty much washed out in one, two, three, six sessions, right? I mean, it took it right out right there. So this whole area of the upside, which you could have played very nicely, and that would have been good. You would have had a, a significant reversal off of this, right? If you played this daily, you would have gotten in here somewhere uh, about the 118 level. You would have been out somewhere actually, about the 124 level, five points. You would have had an opportunity to get out a little bit earlier, but the fact is, we didn't see that on the charts. You may have seen it in maybe some of the shorter terms. If we looked at the uh, the 60 minute, for example, or the 240 minute, maybe it would have helped you. But now we're seeing also this aileron has turned sharply lower. Momentum is down, and that's what the aileron is doing. If what we're looking at is price levels and bias to the upside or downside, long side, short side, or consolidation, if that's really primarily what we're focusing in on, and that's how we make the money, right? Is that break of any of those levels and a significant break above a consolidation point or below. That's where we make this huge move, what we saw right here, right? This big move to the upside that we saw Apple do. Um, it was a clear signal, and we saw that happen right there. 
and uh, move up, and that was about, what, 14 days of beautiness. But what we see at the same time is we had a very good level of overall momentum. Now things are turning. They don't look so good anymore. Level of, of momentum. So I like to use both these together. They are a separate package. You know, I mean, listen, one good trade, one even good trade, one trade, a little bit of money that you make will pay for an entire month of this. And that's why we have such great ratings and reviews on the trading. The number one, by the way, number one rated overall application. The reason is that we get such great reviews because people are making money with this. So hopefully you've taken the opportunity to get that. And oh, that's all I'll do from a sales point today. How are we doing on time? We're doing good. Um, Penn, let's see this one. Penn, Penn came out yesterday. There was uh, some hoo-ha from Jim Cramer that how great this will be. One of the things about Penn that's really interesting, we saw this really nice uptrend that started uh, way back. We're just going to look right here, right? We saw couldn't get below this base this baseline that, that that was popping right here. And what happened was that, you know, we, we saw that it was holding, holding. Then the aileron switched, kind of went up. Then we saw a yellow candle, which gave us the notation. There was a long alert pending. And from there, the momentum was positive. And this thing went, I mean, straight. I got a, the wrong tool on here. Uh, this thing went straight up right so we saw this kind of move straight up then what did we get well when we got here is a consolidation so we saw that there was a consolidation in that point and then the consolidation was pretty tight it was as tight as it was here the distance from top to bottom was pretty much uh, probably about the same amount of points that we saw those last consolidations and when it finally broke it moved up really nicely and it took only a little bit of time you got that that uh, long alert uh, that you could have started to put some money into it and got that big pop. You know, the whole thought about gambling and gaming starting to come back has really uh, been very exciting. This is a new stock. This is Rocket Mortgage, Rocket Companies, uh, I guess a spinoff, if you will, of Quicken Loans, the front-facing uh, uh, online-only mortgage company. Um, you know, one of the things I always like to say is this, and I think I may have told you this, and I'd like you to, to, to put this on your chart permanently, a, a design that looks like this. When you get an IPO, when you see that IPO kind of peak out a little bit, and then what happens is you start to get your next level, and it kind of comes down. It doesn't really get below because it's being supported by the uh, various players that are supporting this. But once you see that get above that level, um, that we saw that rounding, see that big rounding, if that happens, usually these things take off. And what I would say to you is usually four or five days from there, you can see a really nice uptrend on that. Right now we're seeing a consolidation, so use that same line, 2510, give or take a couple. Um, it's too, still too early for us to get enough data in here for, it's only been trading for, I don't know, a month, uh, for a daily. But if you did trade, change this to, for example, uh, 60 minute, for example, you would have some in there. So that's that line, that 25, is it 2510, I guess? Uh, we put that on there. Yeah, 2510 that's coming across. I would like to say that I'd like to give a little more breathing room. Yeah, so you get to about 2530, I think there's an opportunity here. Um, and if we switch back to our, for example, 60 minute, that's well above. I mean, on a 60 minute, if you could sneak into this thing and see it's right above those levels here. Um, if you could sneak in probably above 2450, if this thing holds, that would be good. Right now, your aileron is showing a pretty uh, nothing going on there. Purple Innovations, 60 Minute, had a gigantic pop yesterday. And another new stock, but we saw this major basing out. I think this had to do with restoration hardware as well, where there was the idea that a lot of people were buying things that were just overpriced and they didn't care, so it kind of allowed it to move up. Um, but you did get right to there. If you were long this, you would play this right, and you would have gotten, you know, said, okay, I'll take that lurch off of this side. There's not a lot of stuff when I look to the right, uh, look from um, right to left. When I look left, and I don't see a lot of uh, clogging going on. So, you know, I don't see a lot of, of lines in there. I don't see a lot of business, a lot of, you know, opportunity for this to move straight up. And it did, came right on to that. Uh, I'm not sure I'd play this moving forward. Uh, what else do we got here? Workhorse, interesting play. Um, these are more trading, very short-term trading, small positions. Some of these also have um, a smaller amount of overall uh, volume, so you have to be careful on how you play these. We get a little bit overextended on workhorse trading up about a little bit today, but if we go back to the daily on this, I want to show you why I want to. No, this is a daily. That's why I want to show it to you. So once you got over that top line, is where it started taking off, right? You kind of got this ridiculous, just stupid move from you know 282 up to 
23 electric uh, car, uh, uh, cargo van company. Um, but once you got that breakout from the consolidation, it was really good. All right, let's take a look. I'm going to go backwards. Overstock, one of my most hated stocks. OSTK. Just to let you know. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Overstock, I think, is, is uh, going to see a lot of um, opportunity, again, from the Red Hat. Uh, not Red Hat, RH. I always say Red Hat. Restoration Hardware, RH, uh, moved up into that. We saw that reversal down yesterday. They're currently trading up 544. Again, a very um, highly shorted stock. So you're going to see a lot of short squeezes on this. This whole move on it, though, was a little ridiculous. The whole shop at home, buy at home. Uh, the idea that we're going to buy lower cost items, I think this helped it yesterday. We did see that reversal. What was interesting about that was uh, you did get this reversal and never got above the next level. So it's still a short, and that short is, uh, you got to be careful of the short here. You're right pretty much on the level 76. It's trading at 78. Uh, it has to get above uh, 79 and change before that short will be taken off as a stop. You start to see the rotation up a little bit um, on this, and you got to look at this. I think you'll probably see maybe an opportunity if it can get to 50, uh, 93 again, but eventually I think you'll see down to you know, the 56 range again. Um, SPG, somebody's asking about. Mm, is that not coming up? Hmm. What's going on? Let's go to change the symbol. Hmm. Something going on with the internet today. Ah. Hmm. Not quite sure what's happening right now. There we go. Okay, there's SPG. Uh, SPG on a daily basis. Uh, this is obviously going to see a lot of problems. Mole operator. Uh, you know, some of these companies are even trying to bail out other companies. Uh, you have a very, very tight range here. If you can get above the 72, you have an opportunity to get back to about 80. Uh, we have the short that was put on back here at about 78, taken off about 67 on this chart. Uh, it's interesting. I think the bias was short. I think the bias right now is probably towards the short side as the trend has been down for a long period of time. If you do see some miracle of all miracles, that maybe people are going back to the malls and people are paying rent, you have an opportunity here. Um, edit, interesting name. It's a CRISPR, uh, therapy, CRISPR type of company. Uh, held support really well here at the 2960 level. I like that. Got some uh, problems on your aileron, on your momentum. That's a problem. Um, it's in a consolidation. I mean, if we ever could see anything where you can grab, where you can visualize grabbing a, a, a rectangle and, and just simply drawing it, and what happens is when you do that, you get a look like that, okay, where it's kind of like bouncing in and out, a little bit above, a little bit below. Daily basis, I don't know. It's uh, short term. It's in a short uh, bias here, you know, sell bias. Uh, FLR, is that what somebody put in here? Uh, and did I miss any? Yeah, I think that's it. I don't know what's going on with the uh, trade station this morning. Things are loading, though. Did I miss one? Intel, right? I missed Intel. Intel's interesting. It's kind of, uh, it's just nothing happened. I'm not quite sure what's going on. We'll get to those next time. How's that? I guess there's a lag going on right now. Maybe the market's moving a little bit too quickly. Sometimes we see that. Anyway, well, oh, there we go. SPG, uh, let's see if Intel comes up. No. Nope. No. Nope. I don't know what's going on. Uh, usually this pops up, like, instantaneously. Here's Fluid Gem. Uh, you know, popped up. There was some really good news on this and some players behind it. You know, this did see this major outside day. This is a problem when you see this blow off top and a reversal. Um, I would wait for this to get back up above uh, at least 770. If not, wait for it to get a little bit higher and for your aileron to turn up. Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, we're going to be here on Monday, by the way, for Q&A. That's a different kind of situation. It's not technical analysis, just a Q&A session. Um, and, of course, listen to the Discipline Investor podcast coming this week as well. Tell your friends, make sure to get your... your um, your free trial of all the products we have out there. And I will see you again next week. Make some money, profit. This is what you want. Thanks so much.